So I'm gonna be honest with you, I was not expecting like any of this here when I woke up today. I was expecting over the course of the next couple of days, of course, to see some teasers leading up to Caldera and Warzone Pacific with season one next week. But Call of Duty just said, you know what? Let's just drop it all at once. We got a teaser, a little bit of a trailer, and also a blog post detailing absolutely everything that we know right now, which is quite a bit. We talked about it a little bit the other day where season one could change basically everything we know about Warzone and truth be told there's a lot down to even some fundamentals that are changing that were detailed today so we're breaking down everything you need to know drop your thoughts down there in the comment section down below what are you guys looking forward to the most here out of this you liking what you're seeing so far if you enjoyed the video do me a favor drop a like on the video let's aim for 2,000 on this you guys have been crushing that lately so truly thank you guys so much for the continued support truly appreciate it and of course if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing writing all things Warzone all things Vanguard Caldera and season one are right around the corner and we're gonna keep you the day with everything you need to know so with nearly 70 percent of viewers not subscribed if you'd like to join us on that road to half a million subscribers and stay up to date with absolutely everything hit that subscribe button but said let's jump right into it call of duty's predominantly in the past rolled out things in terms of reveals with teasers and trailers leading up to the full-blown detailing of everything for caldera they just said forget everything that you know we're dropping everything right up front they started today by dropping a little bit of a teaser of the brand new map with the main point points of interest, showing us the different sections that we'd see in the presumed TAC map atlas like we saw with the regular guides in Verdansk throughout the last year and a half. Then we saw a little bit of a trailer come into play where we saw some fly throughs of the map as a mock tourist infomercial on why you should visit Caldera. Then we finally got the full blog post detailing absolutely everything that we know of right now and there is a lot when it comes down to the map itself some major changes coming here within warzone call of duty just said you know what let's give the people what they want so let's start out with all of that right up front let's start with the map itself a broad overview here with this this was the first thing they ended up tweeting they ended up talking about warzone pacific caldera Operation Vulcan, as it's called here. Caldera is sectioned off into 16 different areas here across arsenal, docks, runway, ruins, mines, peak, beachhead, village, lagoon, airfield, fields, sub pen, power plant, capital, and resort. Each of these having a little bit of their own unique flair, offering up different engagements that you can end up taking, some much more wide open, others a little bit more dense and urban. Later, a little bit detailed, we see places like the naval arsenal, the industrial docks, the runway, the ruins, the phosphate mines, the peak, the beachhead, the river village, the clear water lagoon, the caldera terminal, the agricultural center, the shark's lair submarine, pen, the Caldera Power Plant, the Caldera Capital City, the Royal Cabana Resort, and others here alongside all of that. Now, the map itself looks to have some sprawling environments here, looks to be rather large. Of course, in some of these major key art images, you can't quite make out where everything else is on the island. So it looks like we have a decent bit of space between each of these, a lot of environment, a lot of locale to explore, and overall just an entire new world here. Now, comparatively, my friend Exclusive Ace broke this down where it is very comparable to the size of Verdansk. So naturally, you're not going to see from one point to the other. But if pacing is anything to be expected, it should be comparable to what we have now. Just an entirely different new landscape, new world to explore, and everything that goes along with that. Personally, I am very excited here for this. In one particular, maybe just kind of weird reason to me, is the map itself looks vibrant and bright. One of the things that I absolutely could not stand with Warzone in the past year or so was that it started in Rebirth Island, where it had a yellow slash orangish hue and tint to the overall environment rebirth island saw that then a couple of seasons later that got changed down and then it kind of shifted to verdansk 84 where it had that sort of flashback orangish hue to everything that slowly started to dissipate i think over time but this now is seemingly the rebirth island lighting where you have everything that's crystal clear that you can see at a distance it's bright it's vibrant it's something that doesn't conceal players as much as you may think so that's something that i'm incredibly excited here for but looking at all these other different locales points of interest and everything like that it has me incredibly excited. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, it looks like a couple of these are already sort of being custom tailored to the engine shift, it seems, that we'll be seeing since it is mentioned we'll share Vanguard's engine within Warzone now going forward, because the image for the industrial docks, those cargo containers, almost all of those are wooden, so you're gonna be able to shoot through those, break that destructible cover, looks like. One thing that I'm not quite looking forward to is the key art image for Caldera Terminal has another ATC, so hopefully that's not another one-way angle at least give us two or three options to contest the people camping up top there. That'd be great, but I guess we'll see. Now, outside of that, of course, the map itself looks great, but 
some of the other cooler things and maybe even bigger implications for Warzone were that there are new innovations and additions to some very big quality of life things within Warzone that are being changed out with this Warzone Pacific experience. Number one, the Gulag is going to be changing ever so slightly. If you played Iron Trials, that is something that this is going to mimic the Gulag system in there, where you drop back with the weapon or weapons that you end up having along with that lethal equipment given within the Gulag if you end up coming out the victor. So you don't drop in with just your pistol anymore. It gives you a little bit more of a fighting chance, but it is something that absolutely is dependent on how you end up performing in that Gulag. A nice little twist here that offers a little bit more benefit to winning that Gulag, but then also we end up seeing that there are many things that are being nerfed, adjusted, and changed. Fueled upgrades in particular are mentioned as having a decent number of changes here. Dead Silence is being nerfed. To what degree, we don't quite know just yet. Stopping power rounds are completely gone, which is phenomenal if you ask me. We end up seeing that there are going to be changes to the stun grenades and the heartbeat sensors as well, likely giving a less effectiveness here to that with the stun grenades effect probably lasting a little shorter. Heartbeat sensors maybe being on a battery or having a bigger time between each burst that it sends out to show you where players are. Dual wield melee weapons are being nerfed here, so that Kali stick, those Psy, those are not going to be able to kill you as fast as they have in the past. Loadout drop markers, those are also going to be changed. Similar to how we see with Operation Flashback and you cannot buy those in the buy station until the loadout event actually happens. That's actually going to be the standard now going forward for Warzone, whereas you cannot buy a loadout drop within the first 40 to 60 seconds here and get a jump on your enemies right around the corner. It gives a little bit more of a tactical nature to, is this worth it going into a mid-game purchase? Because the loadout drop, if it happens at the same interval in time, is about 45 seconds before the Zone 1 collapse ends up finishing, going into the preview of Zone 2. So a couple of minutes in-game, you're going to have to fight with whatever weapons you find on the ground, whatever armory you have there. So it makes it a little bit more true to the battle royale nature that the game has been built on, where whatever you find is kind of what you have to fight it out with and what you've got. Outside of that, most lethal equipment will now deal more damage. The snapshot grenade has a higher effective radius. The stim will apply a slight movement boost on top of what we already see with that. And the decoy grenade will now not only just pester players with the sound of gunfire audio, but if they're in a certain distance, they'll actually get hit with rubber bullets that do just enough damage to be an annoyance. Gas masks are something that are changed as well. That gas mask animation is finally changed to the point where it's not as much a problem. It will it will still have some situations with it, but it'll be something that allows you to make this easier when plating up or maybe reloading whenever the circle is collapsing. So it seems like we'll have a slight adjustment here where you're not putting on your gas mask and taking it off and ruining every gunfight imaginable. Explosive gas canisters are also something brand new here with this, which makes me wonder if this was something that was seen all the way back in Modern Warfare, like season five or something like that. We saw a brief period of time where there were explosive canisters of fire and gas that were available, but then they were subsequently taken out and there was nothing ever done with them. Now, these gas canisters are said to be able to be held by two hands. You have to drop your weapon to do this, and that does follow suit to what we saw with that previously mentioned gas canister over a year ago at this point. So that's something you can throw it, you can shoot it, whatever the case may be. You can even attach it to zip lines and ascenders to allow those pesty campers to have a little bit of a uh, welcome home gift. Outside of that, another major quality of life change is the ability to walk in water. This is the first time we've seen this, and I've always found it so funny that you have these elite operators, but the moment they touch even the slightest bit of water, they end up just keeling over and dying. This is going to be something where you can't quite swim just yet within Warzone. That might be something that still comes in the future, but we're able to wade in water and go even to a crouching position, which if you do that in knee-high water, you actually gain the effects of cold-blooded. Going in water also scrambles the effects of footsteps, even to those that run the tracker perk. So that's something that's pretty cool. And because who doesn't love science, if you throw anything fire-based into the water, it now causes a smoke screen when hitting the water, adding a new layer of the tactics to traverse water and shallow pools. Additionally, contracts and public events are going to be returning with some new things being introduced. The supply drop contract is going to airlift a valuable crate into the map for anybody to pick up, but only the exact location is revealed to the players that completed that contract. Another new bounty is the big game bounty, which will then target the operator in the match with the highest number of kills, but only once per game. 
Then we also have one coming in called the Top Secret Contract, which all details are, as you'd probably expect, redacted at this point until you pick it up, but also end up coming with greater rewards as it's detailed. Public events like the restock and resurgence events from Rebirth will be coming to Caldera. The cash drops will be added in from Operation Flashback. And they also mentioned the redacted weapon crates are going to be returning here with this, which are likely going to be having those blueprints with higher number of attachments included in that. Maybe even some Black Ops Cold War weaponry, and maybe even they get crazy and they add eight attachments to Modern Warfare weaponry. But we'll have to see how that all works out. But that is the major quality of life changes they mentioned and of course, finally, that we'll see Ricochet added in that anti-cheat on a kernel level. So you're going to have to download this update to play anything Warzone, and it will then install the Ricochet anti-cheat to allow no cheaters to get through, hopefully. But that said, that is the quality of life changes, the new reveal of Warzone Pacific and Caldera. And man, oh man, I did not expect to wake up and see all of this today. So that said, that is where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What do you guys think here of this? Are you looking forward to the new map? Are you liking some of these changes that we end up seeing? Anything you got, let me know down below in the comments. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Vanguard, all things Warzone. Season 1 with Caldera is right around the corner, so make sure you don't miss a single thing. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.